game. We'll find out. Maybe in the hands of Clid. Clid does certainly love the champion. Perhaps something we're going to have to keep track of. And in general, uh, I kind of had high expectations for LNG and Gen uh, Genji were very e easily able to dismantle them, mostly on the back of BDD, but across the board, once they got that lead, they snowballed it very successfully. Can Mad fight back a little bit more, or are we going to see some of the same messy mistakes that we saw yesterday? <laughs> I'm sorry, I just can't get over that face. I want to hear the comms <laughs> for, for what was going on there. <laughs> During the big man, you know, there's some really tough choices you have to make sometimes. Turns out the answer was Rise. Yeah, we're banning Rise. <laughs> I want to hear what the... <laughs> with the discussion wise, but they're they're focusing humanoid. I think that is a, a good choice here from Gen G. We yeah. heard the LSS talk about how big uh, of a win condition humanoid is for Mad Lions and, and plays right into their team fighting. So with BDD's success yesterday, focusing humanoid, banning the twisted bait to disallow him from roaming around, banning away the rise to get some of these playmaking champions out of his hands where he can affect the map uh, can be very, very big. Because when you think of BDD, his giant carry most successful influential champions have been, yes, the Zoe yesterday, but things like the Azir as well. Absolutely. Um, that, that don't want to have to deal with so much roaming around the map. That plus Ruler. This is the, the big carry of the team usually, and he wants his time in the sun. So you're also looking at early picks for bottom lane. Misfortune was banned away. Guess what? Uh, Yumi's picked up instantly another B1 pick for Yumi. Will they go uh, an Aphelios combination here for Ruler? I've always loved him with it. You have the opening. Um, yeah. But a lot of people have been throwing kill lanes, in quote, at Yumi lanes and being unsuccessful with it. I think she's just such a difficult champion to shut down. And again, doing very well so far in the tournament. Have to see how they adapt. And instant focus on the bot lane does free up some of the more uh, premier jungle picks. Clid, notorious for having, uh, I'd say, a small champ effective champion pool. He has a couple picks that he generally really likes to go to. Zin, very much in the wheel uh, wheelhouse of kind of what we expect from him. See, again, as interesting as the bot lane it is, I keep looking back to mid jungle because of something Alfari said in his winner's interview yesterday, which he said most teams that he's seen play against Mad just disrespect their mid jungle. And the reason that TL was able to find success is they gave that mid jungle respect and when you're prioritizing these early jungle picks i'm starting to feel like bd or bdd and the side of genji may already know that recipe for success well they certainly did give them the respect and focus them here with the double bands on mid plus the the prio on jungle pick you know lee sin is already banned out that would be the premier one and it might even be a blind here from mad if they go with this early graves definitely flexible as we keep on repeating but generally, uh, especially if you lock in Xin Zhao, <laughs> it's either top or mid, so it's going to be a solo in Graves. Yep. The question, of course, for me now is we've seen in the LPL incredibly consistently, Lissandra is the counter pick for the LeBlanc easy point and click lockup. And you have burst damage to follow it up as well from both the Zin and the Graves. Feels like it could be a strong pick, but is that something that BDD wants to go for? Plus, with all of these players picking LeBlanc so early, do we get to see something like a Lissandra lock into it? Something like the Malzahar locking into it uh, to, to point click shut her down? Or do you just go with comfort? And that's the reason Mad blind their, blind their LeBlanc, because they know, all right, he's just going to go back to his champions. He has almost double of any other champion Azir plays over his career. BDD on Azir, it got them here to Worlds. Let's see if it can get them a win over Mad in the group and get them to remain undefeated. That means that they can then focus on the jungle bans here, ban away El Yoya. This, this man has been so incredible for Mad Lions. He transformed the team when he joined the team. He uh, actually skyrocketed them to success. So. With them focusing two more bands on him and the early pickup there for Clid with the Zin, I really like the attention uh, to the jungle mid that you mentioned. Yeah, and oh yeah, a long time a student of international junglers has always looked up to the big names like Canyon. See how he will stack up against players like Clid, a guy who's had an they incredible don't trajectory. Trundle, though. The Trundle to me is one of the most successful into Zin. So seeing an early Zin pick but not protecting it with a Trundle ban here, I think is a bit erroneous. Yeah, you're binning out the Gwen for the late game scaling for for the matchup into Graves is 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 not a, a great one, but Trundle makes so much sense here for for Mad Lions for El Yoya because you can either go with the old way that Trundle used to fight Olaf, which is Red Smite 
um, Conqueror, you just ult him and you stat check him. Or it's so effective to just pillars in in so many situations. If there's no minion, no offensive thing around to W, you can get a lot of picks on his in. You can force his ultimate out a lot of times just with pillars. Yeah, and at this point, you've now locked in the Kalista. You've taken away really the only AP top we've seen in the hands of Arma. So you're very likely going to see double AD top side coming in, which is going to make the Graves' life incredibly easy. And I love what we're seeing from Genji in the draft so far. Now, the composition, normally I'd say it might be a little bit AD heavy, but at the end of the day, Wukong, you know, you got double AD on the top side already committed for Genji. Maybe it's just double AD on both sides. You got two top laners who are just going to get a lot of free armor from passives and uh, slowly but surely kill each other. Yeah, I see your armor passive and raise you an armor <laughs> passive, Dracos. All right, moment of truth. What's it going to be? El yo ya. I want to see the jungle. We can leave a 0.01% chance of a Wukong jungle <laughs> open uh, for, for a short please, amount of time. Please don't. Because me, fun. please don't. <laughs> <laughs> that would be so egregious. With Arma <laughs> on your team, and you're just like, yeah, we're going to swap it into swap jungle. We're going to swap it. Yeah, that'd be rough. <laughs> nope, it is the Kiana here. So Kiana burst damage. Not going to be the Trundle. Um, but, uh, you know, Kiana, especially if you do get set up for it and you have your ultimate, you can definitely burst combo the Zin. So we shall see if El Yoyo is able to get into these positions. The early stages have a lot of very good setups for, for Zen possible ganks. You know, Lucian, Yumi on the bottom side of the map. When you're facing Callista Nautilus kill lane, plus a Zin Zhao jungle into Kiana early, should be Genji trying to make bottom side of the map plays early on. And, and generally, for Genji, what you expect from this team, despite what you've seen earlier, is a more bottom triangle of the map focus, focusing on BDD and Ruler, trying to get them into a very strong position to team fight towards the mid and late stages of the game. And with him getting his hands on his Kalista, I mean, it was all BDD yesterday, but I am, I am very excited to see the Ruler Kalista. I am as well, and I think the big question is, can they can they break this bottom lane? Of course, in EU domestically, I was always, always a big fan of Kaiser on Engage Champions. I think it was one of his big strengths, he's incredible at team fighting. But the Yumi is so powerful in the meta right now, I respect the pickup, but how is it going to match up to such an incredibly aggressive and oppressive lane like Kalista Nautilus? you got a Zin Zhao jungle too, and there's just so much setup across the board in this early game for Gen.G, backed up by this incredible scaling option of, of the Azir in the hands of BDD. And yeah. You always lock in your pocket BDD Azir for later, and like, all right, we're good to go <laughs> for those team fights later on. Uh, everything else is invested in control, basically, to get them there. We'll see if Mad Lions maybe can disrupt that as early as minute one if they want to go for level one. But it looks like a pretty split map so far. It's just a five point across. Karzi and Kaiser staying relatively safe. Early vision has been big. Of course, Verizon 5G all chat. Share your opinions, cheers, well wishes using the Verizon 5G all chat. Let us know how you feel about Yumi. Let us know how you feel about Jarvan and any other champion that LEC casters may have really strong opinions yeah, about. Yeah, we'll, we'll psychoanalyze you if you uh, feel like that's necessary for this time in your life as well. Look, man, therapy's expensive. If I gotta get it from Twitch chat, so be it. Yeah, well, <laughs> give it to you live here at Worlds. <laughs> Defensive ward opening from both sides though. Um, I wanna point out that the one on top side uh, behind the red buff, uh, they're looking for those possible sneaky plays over to get that topside vision while simultaneously setting up with the sweeper in Nautilus inventory for a delayed invade. Anytime you see that that sweeper early on from the support, yeah, it signals a delayed invade. They get their ward kill. They also get their zombie ward up and they, uh, as soon as they get the sweeper reveal, and go forward, Grassblade comes out immediately, flash out, two flashes this early game in the game is big. Now, if they had a man advantage, they have a Zin's out, they have a Nautilus, they have a Kalista, they absolutely win in an even exchange, but Mad Lions had more members, and that's what matters. It is at the cost of a TP, but two flashes in that early lane are going to make it so hard for Ruler in life. And the best part, Daniel, two important flashes for the bottom side where they want to play aggressive. They want to try and get these kills, punish Karzi and Kaiser with their double exhaust uh, <laughs> laying down there with, with Yumi Lucian. No flashes on Nautilus. By the way, I don't know why I keep calling you Daniel. There's nobody else does that to <laughs> you, right? No, no, but it, I appreciate it. It's like it's what makes our cast unique. You're, like, you're so <laughs> close, you're so personal. Yeah. I know where you live. Uh, regardless. Well, we know not. <laughs> 
now I'm going to need that Twitch chat therapy. Oh, Where's I'm moving on quickly here. We're just going to gloss over that one. The bottom line, though, it takes away a lot of that possible aggressiveness out of the Nautilus Callista. You know, with no flashes, it's a lot more difficult to follow up on some of that early game plan as far as setup that we, that we talked about. The, the Yumi lanes generally, you know, early on, if you can take little chip trades, it's perfect. Because everybody that wants to play against Yumi wants to all in, burn your cooldowns, and then go for kills. But yep. if you just get to chip away and then Yumi heal right back up, that's how you scale up with this champion. That's how, uh, you know, you want the early game to go. And with Clid starting on red into Raptors as expected, pathing down to the bottom side, Maybe they still go for this opportunity. It's a little bit difficult for him to find a pathway down there since they they early warded for themselves. You see, uh, it looks like it was uh, Karzi's ward there through the river, uh, sees the pathway. They will even see him if he chases the Scuttle Crab down. But Clid hopping backwards, so he's going to reverse to Scuttle Crab on top side instead. Interesting. We'll see if Alioya is going to go for the contest here. He will be a little bit behind on the initial Scuttle Crab spawn. I don't think Humanoid got a peek of him. Uh, maybe in the right uh, beginning of it, but it looks like it should be. Yeah, both pushing lanes, able to secure topside Scuttle Crab for him, no problem. He shouldn't Ooh, have to smite well. it either. Okay, he does. Know he's been here. Does use his smite anyway? I was wondering. Okay, second one is actually pretty close for cooldown. Hook is going to go in. That's going to be the auto coming out as well. Cards are getting locked up. Exhaust and Ignite's now being traded, but Ruler has to run for his life. They're so oh. powerful. They're going to grab one. Cards still living. Kaiser are trying to body block as much as humanly possible, but the big anchor is going to get it done. Cat versus Nautilus. They're just going to walk away. Round two, Elioya <laughs> in the top lane, Water Blade in hand. This could get messy. Humanoid, there's no mana on BDD. He's moving and he's taking a tower shot. One more! Oh, outplayed! Oh, one more! The action does not stop. Armit now stepping forward. He's got a lot of armor because it's stacking up. He's got Conquer Proc as well. Instantly, Mad Lions just like that. I love it. It's a rumble in every single lane here. This is what you want to see at World's Group Stage, baby. Mad Lions are throwing down. This is such an important game for them versus Genji in this group. After taking that first loss to Team Liquid, they need to grab the win here. They are setting themselves up for so much success. The double exhaust lane down there, Karzi and Kaiser. Getting that kill first, but then a little bit of a blooper afterwards when uh, the flash is still dying at the end. Does mean an extra summoner spell in addition to going down. Yeah. Still, the money went to the supports, though. <laughs> so it's going to be killer y uh, Yumi and killer Nautilus. Meanwhile, the other two lanes getting their kills and burning the flashes is just as important. BDD now on this Azir into the LeBlanc win, where usually he's very confident to pick it. No flash completely changes it. Because Humanoid can play very aggressively, even if jungler's not there. He has, to, he has to respect it, and BDD, he slides himself into turret range, trying to go aggressive to get the shield, uh, even though the root is on him, and so chain proc that perfect timing, um, you know, from Humanoid to lock him up for those extra, extra tower shots there, but BDD is the one that slid into place there just inside turret range, so another bit of a blooper from him. Meanwhile, the top side was straightforward. Uh, yeah. Good job by El Yoya pathing up there, chasing him down. Top lane was a gank, mid lane was certainly an outplay, and bottom lane is the product of that level one where they were able to take away those big flashes from the side of life and ruler. Certainly that 2v2 would have been significantly easier if they had those cooldowns up and available. But the downside is, once you start losing to LeBlanc, you generally keep losing to LeBlanc. Now the good news is BDD does have a CS lead. The bad news is El Yoyo's right about to enter his lane. And you'll see good LeBlanc players, as soon as they get a, any sort of lead like this, they just can keep bluffing. And so sometimes you show your jungler, okay. Sometimes you're just bluffing, but every single one has to be respected. So Humanoid does a very good job, keeps up aggressive play, goes for trade after trade after trade. Yes, BDD is sustaining in CS um, and is last hitting extremely well. Some of them being dropped by Humanoid to go for a super uh, aggressive trade there. And also when they did the uh, earlier one, the minion wave was pushing, so lost a yep. couple there. But if they can get more kills and get more mid prio out of it, that's where they'll find their rewards. BDD has so many games on this champion, as we mentioned, though. He he basically specializes in in a lot of these more difficult, you know, kill pressure matchups in, does. in trying to, to out CS and scale for later. Yeah, and we talked a lot about the bat line. And right now, Genji's bat line is clearing control. Their flashes are up. The summoner spells from side of Mad Lions are there. But I think it is important that we highlight, because yesterday was a very different kind of BDD game. It was the Zoe, and yes, that's a pick we know him for, but it's easy to get comfortable thinking of him as this big scaling threat on the Azir. But he did monster that individual mid lane matchup, which is part of the reason why I think that outplay Obviously, BDD is going to hang his head in shame after something like that, but in general, it's just so good because you're shutting down what was supposed to be the reliable late-game insurance for Gen.G pretty early on in the game.
Yeah, we'll see if they can actually play off it. Um, you know, El Yoya is now level six, so his kill pressure, a chain on BDD means death. There's no flash there, so he has to play very respectfully. And, uh, you know, Humanoid can again try and force over and over, but they've got no vision around top or around mid, and they're actually hovering bottom instead. Oh, you're stepping forward. Doesn't look like he was spotted. Now going to leap in, go for the wall stun, but it's not going to work out. It's a bit of a yikes there. That cooldown early on for Kiana is quite large, so ultimate being expended. That is big thumbs up for the bottom lane of Gen G. Ruler, no flash. Difficult uh, situation now for, for Matt because they were already getting pushed out in that lane. Now you're going to have the recall as close as going to come back with Boots Tier 2 as well. Yeah. Ninja Tabby on top of that, so that much more tankiness, that much more survivability. But Clid, I like this. Dashing into the pit here. DDD just continuing to trade back and forth. If they can sneak away this Herald, it's very big. Yeah, leashes it to the top side. Did you know you can actually sneak around the vision of uh, the top Scuttle Crab, by the way, if you hug that wall? I actually didn't. I thought, I thought they changed it so that it was like you could. S yeah, wow. it, it's it's one of the funniest ones. Uh, they do get the Rift Herald. Can they escape with it though? Arma can use the first stack here, instantly fully charging up that Conqueror. Oh, you're gonna deliver Kaiser to the midst. Everybody click getting lower and lower. Humanoid now stepping forward. Perfect ulti from BDD to keep the team alive. Take it out the trash. Sweep them all back into the river. Uh, basically just disengaging for the team though, but it's double neutral objective wins for Gen Z. So while Mad Lions, so much early success, getting these kills, all three lanes, action, 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 all simultaneously and getting themselves some gold, uh, the neutrals going over to Gen G might become problematic. Dragon stacking when you're the ones with the Callista Nautil Nautilus now reaching your level six. If that all in becomes so much more dangerous, has to be worked around, and some of the turret plates being picked up in the aftermath as well. Yes, but have you considered, as Raymond has highlighted here, that the Mad Lions have picked Yumi a fellow feline to give themselves the cat buff, and therefore the game is over? Okay. Checkmate, Does, Kobe. Because I know, I so I don't have a cat for uh, you know Travis reasons, but <laughs> I know that there's always this issue when you get a new cat, and sometimes they don't like the cat that you already have, and they have a hard time, you know, working together. Yeah. Yumi is not a mad sort of feline yet. No, no, no. no. The lions are quite you know, angry, Quite so maybe different disposition. We'll see if it works out. The scaling's yeah. definitely gonna be there, and, mm -hmm. and we've seen so much success. My personal favorite is when you have teams where Yumi's scaling doesn't have to be Yumi on your AD carry later in the game. Yumi can go on these assassins. The best, biggest plays are Yumi jumping on LeBlanc, on Kiana, and actually 1v9ing, picking up those quadras, picking up those pentas, because you get the extra stats, you get the extra heal speed to go chase everyone down, and it really, turns assassins and carries like this into carries that you don't normally see in League of Legends where they're not usually 1v9s. They're not usually true hyper carries that life steal through and heal up and, you know, actually 1v9, but if you attach a Yumi to them, you get to live that dream. Certainly do. See how Mad Lions want to set up for that dream, if it's going to be Humanoid or El Yoya, maybe even Armut, who's going to carry the Yumi through in these fights. But for now, Genji moving in, taking control of the bottom side of the map. Mid lane control is even, but you got four members strong now on the bottom side from Gen G And Karzi and uh, Kaiser, they've got the ulti to clear a wave if it comes to it, but a lot of threat there. Humanoid, though, just continuing to uh, trade Dodge. aggressively. BDD firing back, though. Respect to him, not walking away scared from this LeBlanc. Knows that if he wants to come out in the trades, he needs to fire back with some damage. Yep, not backing down. You just go with the defensive build path. He went with the Merc Treads as necessary. His flash came back up now. A Rulers is still down from that bottom lane play that, that we mentioned, but it's going to come up pretty shortly here, too. And then they can go super aggressively. Life is ready. Point click Nautilus ultimate into knockup, into passive auto for snare. Somebody's going to sit in the same place for a while. And while you already have invested your gold into Grievous Wounds down there, into the Yumi, kind of like to see that. The Executioner's one was one of the first pickups there for a Ruler. He knows he's going to be putting a lot of work into targets receiving healing and wants to be able to get to those, those rend kills. Yeah, I, I think it's really good that you pointed out because sadly it's while we talk about healing reduction a lot, there have been so many games where one team has fallen behind and then we just do not see healing reduction until fourth items in the super, super late game. And just denying that effectiveness early on, having that option now for the entire game, feels like a good pickup. Den denying the shield bow early on or delaying the shield bow early on, not the biggest deal as uh, Life and Ruler have kind of held on to control of this lane with all the kill threat that they do have. 
And the big question, the dragon control. You can have bottom lane control for days. That Rift Herald was about to time out, so Clid pops at bottom, go over and use it as a little bit of distraction. Rotation down here from El Yoyo with the Yumi on top of them. They get the turret play charge before transitioning. Important. A little bit more pressure here on the bottom side. Karzi El Yoyo waiting. Oh, it's and a fish ult. for an engage. Oh, yeah, hesitating though. Doesn't want to overcommit here. Zin's ultimate, of course, makes it very difficult if that is the priority target that they try to access will deny most of the range damage from Lucian. They do have a reset from Humanoid who looks like he's looking for a teleport. Anytime you see minimap them just staying in Fountain, he's got to be looking for his teleport. There it is. Ready to fight for the objective. Do not want to give up the second Drake. Oh, yeah, waiting in stealth, pushing forward. A big ult is going to be crucial. Is fighting the snare in the river. Yumi ult now coming out, but they're throwing the Nautilus right back in the midst of the team. That's going to be one squishy Kiana instantly deleted. Rascal throwing the ult across the bat side. Karzi firing back in the meantime. Humanoid leaping in, trying to lock down Clit. Arma in the midst of every team. The clone as well as him just spinning. Clit now going to get dropped. Karzi flashing out to safety. Absolute messy fight, but Humanoid going into the backside, trying to finish off Ruler. He's going to grab one, but no, the spear is coming out. Finds the kill on life. The ruler fires right back. And they do split kills, but really the biggest exchange, Dragon number two going over to Gen.G. They can keep stacking it. This is how you want to play, uh, you know, this set from, from Gen.G. Force on that possible Dragon Soul as early as possible into the game. So number two, critical pivot point there. They do come out exchanging the kills with, you know, Humanoid flashing in to go get another one and, and exchanging his life there to finish off the support. But Mounting pressure now, as BDD has been fending off the LeBlanc pressure mid lane. They never actually brought, uh, uh, brought the Kiana to combine with Humanoid. That's actually something I was kind of looking for as far as the opening. You know, the flash was blown, keep up that pressure, you know, try and Kiana uh, burst him and, and really keep down this Azir. But since they did not spend resources into it, he just kept farming. He's up to a very suitable pace. Here's another look at how they finish it off. Of course, they're the ones with the Callista. They have the Ren, they have the extra stacks in Dragon. Uh, does get the River Stun there, but immediately Callista ults into Nautilus forward. This is why that bottom duo is so important. And it was actually Rascal got um, the big burst damage there at the end as well to finish off that first kill. Then, trying to repeat here. Clid can't get out. Karzi, good job here by him getting the last auto before flashing out. And, you know what it's saying at the end, you know, getting a, a bit of gold for himself while exchanging and, and giving over the kill is is a bit of a risky maneuver because it also costs him a summer spell in flash, so not quite worth it there. You know, Armada getting aggressive on the top side, knowing that he has jungler and support in the area. Rascal gonna be forced to back away as they get a little bit more tower damage, but it's 15 minutes. Not nearly as important as the early game and breaking down those plates. For now, Genji holding onto the gold lead. And I think important thing in that fight, Elyoya's second ult, again, very ineffective. Only hitting the snare on the Nautilus, not finding the stun on anybody else. And credit to Genji for splitting up and not letting that cooldown be impactful in the fight. That's going to be huge as we move forward because Mad Lions really need that CC if they want to win these team fights. This is hard to fight against this Nautilus Callista. Yeah, they, they have to have a good ultimate, but they also have to have DPS to follow up on it. So that, that one kind of had neither. <laughs> You're like, Turns ah. out if you don't hit people, it's not CC or damage. Who would have yeah. thought? They, uh, the, the good exchange though there is kind of ult for ult. You're, you're forcing the, the Nautilus ult or the Callista ultimate to get the Nautilus, but then he, he has a way in and it's a good follow up there from Gen G. This Rift Herald being started out though, uh, they do have their cooldowns back. So Mad Lions should probably be able to finish it before the rotation comes through, especially with Humanoid playing body blocker. Oh, the eyeball. The back is there. They smite it, they get it, but they can't pick up the rewards. Hatch that eyeball. Here Sit on go. it like an egg. <laughs> the warmth of the Nautilus. Yeah, go squat <laughs> on it. <laughs> there you go, Rascal. It's your job. You're a bouncer now. Nobody touches this eye. Oh, yeah, he's on watch. Grave is a good <laughs> bouncer, too. <laughs> he's got the Mafia skin. It's perfectly thematic. <laughs> That's what we're waiting for is the thematic champion in skin picks. <laughs> you know, the, the Rift Herald is actually quite evil, too. It's like... Uh, it's a scuttle crab that got corrupted Ooh. by the the evil presence of the Baron Pit. Oh wow! <laughs> and then turns he, out, oh, it's actually just the the progeny of Graves. Uh, didn't know that twist was go. coming. He uh, not a mammal. He lays eggs. Who knew? <laughs> <laughs> Give him back his cigar. Get us out of here. <laughs> 
Loon and Zekko now finished for Humanoid. Very crucial item at this stage of the game. Of course, BDDR has his on the opposite side, and you're now seeing the Shield Bow come in for Ruler alongside the Rage Knife. So the Callista, very big, powerful threat. BDD already kicked off to the side lane, but naturally, I do think we need to keep an eye on Humanoid and El Yoya specifically. The big mid-jungle threat, the power, in theory, to delete anyone on the map, but can they make good on it? I agree. I want to live that dream too. Anytime I see Yumi in the game, and you know, a lot of people recoil, but I look for who is going to be the star that gets the attachment, buffs up your stats, you get to chase people down and get your kills. Well, Humanoid is level 11 and he finished his Ludens Echo. So he's a good candidate. As you mentioned, soon to follow will also be El Yoya. Maybe they, with the, with the slow that Yumi can get and the ultimate, maybe they can set him up for a better one oh, of his own. Going in, immediately getting the Callista Alt in exchange. Life's still living, though. Big major team fight all gone. Maybe Mad want to use a little bit of the pressure they built up now to go for something. The dragon spawning in 15 seconds. They are the ones with priority access to the pit, but they will not have the Kiana ult for the fight. So that one was actually a much better trade for Mad of ult for ult, even though it's the same two, because they also chunked out life, and there was no engage follow-up with the second half of the Callista ultimate. So now, no Callista ultimate, no Kiana ultimate. Not quite as much pressure there. Crucially, no Yumi ultimate either, though. Now we can see Yumi uh, attached to Arma here. Double Wukong all huge potential impact. Genji very much grouped up, but obviously Arma can be very telegraphed on the entrance. You can see now he's fishing for the flank. He has the flash. Have they spotted him on the wraparound, however? If you play the poke game versus Mad, you're going to lose. They have a Yumi on their team. So poke from LeBlanc goes unanswered. Dragon started up. LeBlanc showing in the lane, though. This might be the move. Pushing, has bought Pryo for now. Karzi, sidestep is clean. Alti coming out, but there's no follow-up media. It's Armut onto the backside. He's going to find one knockup. Ruler now getting out to safety. Clint in the midst of everybody. But Matt Lyons, they've started the fight, and they're starting to take it. Rascal and BDD still stepping forward. Life and Ruler alive on the backside, but they have to be careful. Humanoid, another round of cooldowns might be able to end it. Who is going to get the drink? El Yoya in the pit, but the Dragon might kill him if they can't end this one quickly. Now the fight kicking in again. BDD from the backside. Instant double kill. Yumi, the El Yoya, can they get it? Kaiser wants a way out, but he cannot find it. Yes, they get the Dragon, but at what cost? BDD was a monster in that fight. The cost is a quadra. Four deaths on the side of Mad Lions and BDD once again on one of his signature, champ signature champions. Sweeps right in. Flash Azir ultimate. Secures the extra kills. Good evasive maneuvers there from Ruler because the flank from Arma, I thought was going to set them up for a huge team fight there. Gets behind on the back line, but immediate exhaust and flash come out. Uh, and they're able to evade it for long enough to buy them time. Dragon DPS actually was meaningful too. <laughs> El Yoya was taking the slow attack from uh, Ocean Drake is so annoying. Uh, big damage. You'll see him right now. He starts at full with the uh, with the Yumi heal, but Axe Effect replay will just show how long and how much DPS the Dragon does get out on him. There's the first one. Sweeps right in. Um, we actually have counterintuitive set up on top of your screen there with the triple. Uh, slips back in. Dragon is just beating him down in the vent. In the spoiler, he gets his revenge. <laughs> uh, he gets the kill on the Dragon, but BDD takes his whole team out for it. Uh, Kaiser wants to slip onto him. El Yoya saying, there's not enough time, friend. Sorry. See you later. Sometimes you're so focused on getting revenge on the Dragon. Mm that you hang your entire team out to dry. Now, there's nothing you could have done probably to save that team fight. Well played by BDD, and now Genji very much in control. 3K gold advantage, Azir scaling up at two items. We got double, he triple healing reduction. They are not gonna let this Yumi be impactful whatsoever. Graves looking stronger, Callista looking terrifying. It's gonna be hard for Mad Lions in the minutes to come. And some of the, the properties for Yumi can still be super annoying because you do give your passive, you know, increase your stats, whoever you're on, and you get your, your Qs and your slows and you set them up. But that's generally more when you're on somebody who's super far ahead and then you wouldn't care about the heal as much. In, in this case, they actually need both properties of the champion to, to sustain through the later stages because Genji, um, you know, set themselves up so well here with the secure setup. Three, you know, two shield bows plus the Gore Drinker. Uh, lots of steel caps down here. Four steel caps on the side of Genji. So uh, if it's not, Humanoid bursting somebody down it takes a lot more time and effort for any of the other Mad Lions options. That's why I would profit size that you'll have Kaiser more often on Humanoid and, and come up with that kind of game saving LeBlanc pick because there's so much armor, there is not magic resistance to have to deal with, and he's going to try and pierce it.
And that's even more amplified by the fact that we do see Moonstone come out on Yumi now. Super standard, but we have seen a lot of Ludens echoes, interestingly enough. Now, admittedly, there's been a lot of games where yeah. Yumi's gotten that uh, giga fed, I guess would be the <laughs> official term. So I'm not sure if this is more standard and it's just a product that Yumi's being fed. But the downside, of course, is while you might have more sustain, you are packing less magic damage. And again, you highlighted it. Ninja tabbies alone are going to do so much work as we get later in the game. Plus, as much as Mad Lions are such a good team fighting team, and it got them back into so many games inside the LEC, guess what Gen G did? <laughs> and they're not going to split up and give a lot of opportunities. You see, 4 there 1 here from them. Teleport should be answered by Graves quickly. If he doesn't start channeling, he won't be there. This is going to be big, though. BDD already has the tower set up. Gen G can just retreat to the tower and fight on their own territory. Humor are getting incredibly, incredibly low. He's running for the hills. They've already taken down the clone, but. BDD essentially trading his passive for that TP on the opposite side. Rascal, of course, was forced to respond, but now Genji can just push forward with confidence into this Mad Lions tier two. Armanov on the flank, Clip looking to look to get something started here. Now the Colin coming out, life getting lower and lower. Clip forced to use the ultimate instantly into the wall. That's gonna hit four. That's massive. That's what Mad were waiting for. Clip now going down. Armanov into the backside. Oh, and there goes the Yumi ult. That's a double looking for a triple. Manages to take down Ruler as well. He might even want the Quadra. BDD is going back under the but he held on to the alt this long. We'll walk away. That's it! Bad Lines find their team fight as much doubt as about to set up here. Huge, huge flank. And there it is. El Yoya. Yeah, your first Kiana ultimate, kind of a whiff. Second one, man, the river, kind of a whiff. But this one, big comeback. So much gold needed here by Bad Lions. Huge. And then the follow up from Armad as well. Big, big use of these team fighting ultimates. This is what they're known for. These sorts of comebacks. You see the flank lined up all along that wall. And uh, guess what? That's all you have to That's see. That's all you get. That's all you get to That's see before we, they kill you. Slapped a not safe for work tag on that bad boy, Keon. That fans. was the last thing Gen G saw before they woke up in the fountain. <laughs> Boom. <laughs> Got him. <laughs> now, Perfect course, replay. There you go. Gen G is still a small lead, still powerful, but you can see how in the context of a big team fight, if Mad can hit that massive cooldown, Kian ult especially, alongside the Wukong ult, the fights get much easier and can't even be Mad favored. Gen G still getting stronger, BDD still very scary, Ruler still a big threat, a hard champion to lock down. We'll see how this one works out. Armin stepping forward, his ultimate's not available yet, so perfect timing for Gen G. Mad just did not have the tools to even remotely contest that. Yeah, no no early push to try and uh, push out mid wave and, and move through there. No push on bottom either to gain access, and so it makes it kind of hard. Yeah, Mad, you know, had a bit of a pincer going, but just a little bit slower than Gen G. Gen G have been so good at setting up the objective first. Uh, very secure too, since maybe you get a flank uh, and you have two assassins, but they easily have two points they can use as their front line. So since they're all still grouped up, it doesn't really give you a great opportunity like that flank did up on the top side of the map where you're coming from the side of the wall and you have really great access there for huge wraparound Kiana ultimate. So this one, since you're not there quick enough for Mad, I like the call not to commit to it. It's, it's kind of afforded to them by the earlier dragon, number three, that they, they actually paid a, a huge price to get. That bought them this time around uh, to delay that soul. But next one, going to be a very difficult setup here. Ocean Soul would be big for Gen G. Maybe it gives them that extra edge to sustain through some of the bursts from these assassins. No. Uh, if you can get that extra life coming back for, for everybody, along with some of the defenses they've been able to stack. And certainly, as well for the Azir, getting there first, getting the vision first, being able to set up, forcing Mad Lions to come into you rather than you having to go into Mad Lions is a massive difference for a champion like Azir, for the Victors, the Orianas of the world. These control mages love it if you have to walk into them. It's so good for you. You get so much free damage, but have to see. Genji can fight for that mid lane control if they can find that avenue. For now, very close in the gold, but Soul also a big thing. Three and a half minutes till Genji can potentially just take that Soul and massively change what these fights can look like is that healing will be big against the assassins. There we go. Taking a bit of poke here, now backing off again. Topside control, the name of the game. Dragon's still very far away, so Baron really the only major objective on the map that has to be concerned about. Humano trying to push out the Silent before moving up to potentially join the team. Like it, try and set up the pressure first. That bottom tower is about to fall over, uh, fall over, and that'd be a great place to put that gold if they could get it, uh, get the tower kill to Humanoid. Problem is, because Gen.G have done such a good job, you see taking away any vision from the side of Mad Lions and pushing out their mid wave, your mid prio plus your vision control means 
Split pushing is so difficult. They can roam down with numbers. They can, uh, you know, push you out of uh, any of this this territory here. So good defense there by Genji, not letting any of this gold go over before the next team fight. And a lot of this LeBlanc build is around cooldown reduction. Uh, so it's not it's not quite as bursty as trying to find that really nice, satisfying pop onto the backside. He's about to hit level 16 though, so the extra level in your ultimate uh, puts through a lot more success as far as trying to actually, you know, kill BDD or Ruler. Problem is, Shield Bow's on both of the AD carry members, and then Zonia's now being just completed by BDD. He can Zonia's through uh, one of the chains and, and block one of your combos. Next time he sees the ultimate Q come out or something like that, you can avoid so much damage. Plus, we love to see those BDD Azir sex going in for the big yeah. play, so he can use it either way. I think the later in the game you go, though, uh, the harder the Azir sec becomes because you are very much risking getting one shot. The good news is, of course, as you highlighted, the items, uh, defensive itemization options are easy. You can always Zanya's, but I think we've, I've seen domestically at least, and I don't know if you've had the same experience in LCS, but you see so many guys who they do the Azir sec at one item and they're like, yes, and then they get to three <laughs> items and they try to Azir sec, they get one shot and they're like, wait, I'm not the Azir sec guy anymore. I'm the team fight damage guy now. I can't be taking risks like this. Hey man, you gotta take mit take some risks in your life. Uh, spice it up a little. You don't want to do the same old every single time. I mean, Azir's been alive for you know like lore wise ten thousand years or whatever. Reincarnated Emperor, he gets bored. You, know? you, gotta, you, gotta, you gotta flip it every once in a while. Especially with guys like BDD who literally have been playing Azir <laughs> his entire career. <laughs> He's seen it all. He's like, I remember when I got a knock-up and a shield on this E. I remember when I only had one Sand Soldier. <laughs> I could push Wait. W on the tower to do bonus damage. <laughs> oh, man. If you've never experienced that as year, you're lucky. I envy you. It's a dark, it's a dark time in many league players' mind, but... Okay, Humanoid did get his level 16, and, and Gen.G solo laners yet to acquire theirs. So a little bit of an advantage, trying to go in for the poke now. And you highlighted earlier, cooldown reduction, just about that poke, not about that big satisfying pop until maybe health bars are a little bit lower, but can just keep spamming these cooldowns. Ton of ability haste at this point in the game. Yumi gonna back, back that up a little bit as well. Again, not the Ludens build, but still a decent amount of damage here with the Chemtech pure, uh, Putrefier. And despite Grievous Wounds items being picked up all over the place on the side of Gen.G, if you just continue to go in for this poke and you don't get locked in for the all-in from Mad Lions, you slowly acquire that advantage. Giant staring contest here. I'm not going to burn that cooldown now. Wukong, uh, relatively long cooldowns on the basic ability. They're not going to commit to this one, but he's just going to turn right back on top of them. Exhaust going down, calling over the wall. Now Humanoid jumping onto the entire team. Not a lot of damage coming out, but big all from El Yoya. They stack up against the wall, but BDD again. He wants to turn it, but Humanoid, he's already found his priority target. They're still living. They're holding on. They've got all those grievous wounds, but they can't finish the kill. It's a master class in 2v2, 3v2 rather, as the Yumi's still part of the fight. But Clint, BDD holding on. El Yoya ready to go over the wall, but they're going to turn immediately. Oh! fight at the end of the day, Mad, take it. And who's left standing? It's the Yumi empowered LeBlanc. Gen G, I think they made a large blunder right at the beginning of this fight, chasing Armut so far into the jungle, in between these two walls, in between this corridor. You are just asking for the double ultimate. Armut turns it around on them. Good job by him to lure Gen G through this death corridor behind Dragon Pit. He immediately then flashes on three members. Big knockup. Rascal takes 80% of his life and shield bow pop just from the culling over the wall and Armut on him. So good flash here. He sets it up. Yumi ult plus Wukong ult. El Yoya, keep your eyes top of the screen. He comes around. They're between the two walls. Multiple knockup. He flashes in, gets the big ult. Then it's about the chase down on the outside, though. BDD, even with exhaust on him, walls over. They get the kill onto Callista, finishing him off. Humanoid tried to get the chain there through onto BDD. Locks up Clid instead. Zonia's is used early. And since El yo on the other side of your screen has Yumi, plus was able to get the Honey Fruit, enough damage to finish off the Azir and easily set up El yo um, excuse me, <laughs> Humanoid. <laughs> Oh, we own that one. Yeah, the longer the fight goes, the, the the more the team with Yumi is happy. As much work as BDD can put in on the Azir, we don't have numbers here for healing numbers. Sure. So uh, damage numbers are great, but sustain also goes a long way. It certainly does. Uh, impressive team fight from the side of Matt. Felt very closer when Humanoid first calling over the wall. Felt great. Humanoid jumping over the wall didn't do that much damage initially, but then of course the follow up, a clean alt from Elioia again. The first three, not good. Four and five. Great. I mean, that, if you were going to request <laughs> which ults are going to be good, you would want a power curve that's better later into the game, yeah. you know, the more critical ones. So 
Let's take a look at this Baron attempt from Gen G over the back of the wall. There's no vision. They have no idea until they oh, mouse over. Even. They see the teleport. You can see teleports in fog, but it's too late. 3K getting lower. Oh, yeah, yeah. He can just off the wall. Maybe they can get something back. He is going in. Big damage. Clint now. He has the passive protection, but he's still going to get locked up here. They're at least going to take down the jungler. Life giving his life as well. And Gen G going to retreat three strong. They've still got Baron, but there's a brief window now for Mad to punish. And what it's about is what you get after that. Because two kills, if it's just that for Baron, is is not too shabby of a trade, but because you give over your two kills, it's not just that kill gold, it's your map pressure. And there's so much here standing for Mad Lions to take. Mid tower evaporates, and even with the uh, Baron buff here, still 25 seconds left on Clid, 15 left there on life, so they don't have the presence to actually force on either of these. And Mad Lions taking the time to push out every single lane. Rascal fancies himself a 1v1. All right, smoke screen already used. I'll go gaming. Humanoid. All right. They are herding Humanoid very slowly but surely into the waiting arms of BDD. He's going to dash through. He's going to push back. Graves is now walking back to the clone spot, but Humanoid still manages to make it out. Well, you always remember this day as the day you wasted time <laughs> running after the LeBlanc. <laughs> Thought we were gonna go with the, the classic captain there. Yeah, but I did. I, you mixed little, it up. Uh, all right, all right. Well, you turn right out of that there one. You go. It's been used too many times, <laughs> sir. Too many times. Gen G, though, they still now will retain the, the Baron buff. So see what they can actually do pushing out. Mad Lions were pretty happy with being able to get mid turret, push on bottom side there as well. Uh, and Humanoid buying them plenty of time, uh, avoiding both solo laners from the side of Gen G. Gets pretty good gold outcome out of it. Minus over 1,300 gold here for the side of Gen G off of that Baron so far. And again, waiting for that next big team fight. Soul still on the table for Gen G in a minute and 30 seconds. And I think crucially, earlier, it was the, the, the ability haste build for LeBlanc. But now that she's got the death cap, we're back to full on damage. She can definitely pop somebody. And as highlighted earlier, mostly physical damage. There's no MR. And now the fight's kicking off. Oh, yeah, yeah. Again, into the back line. They're trying to delete the entire team. Ruler now running for his life, but he's holding on for now. Humanoid immediately leads to the back line, trying to isolate the primary characters. But Elio is getting burned down. The Yumi healing is still coming in clutch. The Grievous wounds are not. Enough! Humanoid is popping people left and right. BDD, Rascal, Ruler, standing strong, but Humanoid flashing in. Alongside the W, Ruler blinking health bar. No major objectives on the map right now, but they're trying to take away these last Barons, and Humanoid just leaping in, leaping out, healing yeah. up, and doing it again. It's beautiful to watch the, the kite and poke playstyle here when you have Yumi <laughs> trying to make use of your annoying mobility with your LeBlancs, with your Kiana, poke them down, then rely on that healing cooldown to go for round number two. In the end, though, it only gets kind of a, a two for one as far as the kills go, and, and Gen G able to yeah. fight their way out of the majority of this dangerous situation. BDD, remember, was not there at the beginning of the fight, and he's the one that does the most work for this team as far as DPS output. So teleport was used, arrived a little bit late, and Mad Lions now hard push up mid. Mad Lions have mid cryo, but all the vision is still set up in the favor of Gen G. They need to move back to this objective. 11 seconds until it spawns. Clid has just respawned and will head to that one. This could be the fight that decides the game. El Yoya has his ultimate. Similar story on the outside. Ruler's still waiting on his. That's going to be big. BDD does not have his ultimate. Potentially a small window where Mad can force a fight. Ooh, he can blast cone into the brush inside Dragon Pit, but it'll turn around and aggro him. <laughs> Dragon can't be fooled. Certainly will not be. Gen G are giving up creeps just to be here. It's a massive wave stacking. Not gonna be too impactful yet, but El Yoya again going in. He's going to find three man lockup. The pullback is there. Ruler throwing him back in the midst of the team. They've held the line, they've held the front line. Gen G standing strong, but it's humanoid on the flank. He's trying to burn down Rascal, but it's not enough. BDD going forward. BDD hungry for blood. El Yoya invisible for a moment, leaping in, dashing in, trying to get the job done, and he'll make it happen. Needs to wait a few seconds to get the grass plate back up. Cards on the flank. Humanoid on the flank. Gen G are being picked apart. They tried to fight front to back, but Mad Lions found Rascal. the back line access. Rascal now coming back. Humanoid locked up. They want to finish the job. He's invisible, but not nearly enough. They Get, no, they do not Carsey, get the soul. Carsey, Carsey takes it. it away. But Gen G, they've taken the fight. They can run bot lane. They can take even more. See, the thing with forcing on an objective, Gen G are the ones that want the all in for the fight. So Mad chunking in, they just continue it. Force down the extra kills here on the carry. So Gen G, they acquired the kills they wanted, except for the dragon. Carsey was able to steal it away. No soul, but the death timers are all they need, Dracos. They're pushing in. Seven seconds on Armut. Now gonna see the recall from El Yoya, but breaking that bot lane inhibitor is massive. Now a point of pressure, a minute and 20 seconds till the Baron and those super minions are gonna be knocking on the bottom side of Mad Lion's base.
So the full commit here on, on the opening gets a decent chunk onto Rascal, but no, not enough burst damage. You see Humanoid tries to flank around and pick him off, but the flash from Rascal saves his life, so they don't get the trash. The thought pick damage now going in. Rascal isolated, take it out. No flash this time around. He flashed in the last team fight to avoid the combo from Humanoid. And even though Genji were to push them out of the river, Karzi with the last bit of damage on that Lucian, the big hero for them, denies the soul, gets themselves to soul point. Three oceans in a row picked up there. Not in a row, but nevertheless, three! <laughs> That's all that matters, three. Next one will be soul point for either side. And again, as we head into, I keep saying this, but what could be the final fight of the game, <laughs> remember the stakes of this group. This is the group where everybody in the world feels like anybody can get out. After yesterday, Matt were looking beatable. And if Genji took them a d down today, they would have felt like the favorites to make it out of this group in first place. But Matt are now firing back. We could be in a group at the end of this day with four teams at one and one. Pressure just continues to rise. Every single one of these best of ones matters so much. Certainly does, and then the high pressure situations like Baron spawning now, the pressure mounts. There's no vision and no attempt from Gen G to even get to that side of the map. They're making a play at a, at a pick on this side. They've completely given it up. This will be Mad Lions Baron. Massive for the Mad Lions. See what they can do with it now. Gen G's first Baron, they had a lot of members picked off. They didn't really get to use that pressure too much across the map. Mad Lions, all five members getting it is big. The sacrifices Mad Lions made to get both the first dragon, which remember cost them several deaths to delay the Ocean Soul points, and then the sacrifices in the preceding ones, and being able to pick up the last one paid off so big because now they've scaled. Guess what? Everyone always referring to the Yumi scaling is dream situations like this where you've got multiple assassins for the Yumi to jump on and empower. It becomes very difficult here for, uh, for Gen G. They can try and rely on BDD, fight around him. He has huge carry potential, huge damage output, but uh, there are so many angles that they have to worry about and have to cover from Mad. They're just making the call to split Baron empowered recalls means you can answer these calls very effectively, but they're keeping. No, okay, they even get LeBlanc back. So they successfully forced all the recalls out of Mad Lions just with the bottom side push here. Uh, Baron empowered ones means it doesn't cost them anything. Good from Gen G to recognize that that's one of the ways that they can force Mad not to utilize that Baron. Of course, maybe flashbacks to the game we saw earlier today, that big base race between FBX and C9, not wanting to take any of those risks, even though they are the ones with the Baron buff. So wasting some of this time on the Baron. Of course, all the tier twos were essentially already gone, so there's really not a lot to easily take with this Baron, but I love it. A death push from Gen G. Is it gonna work out for them? Teleport is there for Humanoid. He's currently pushing up mid. Rascals is about to come up, so I doubt they'll force the fight before Rascals RC. cooldown comes up. A couple more seconds, there he goes, should have it. Doesn't see anybody. They might not even be there, observers. Oh. I mean, well played, but you're baiting, you're baiting us. Oh, yeah, yeah, coming over the wall. The vision now, they're going to see it. They can start to poke. They can get Genji out of the area. A minute to that also crucial Ocean Soul will spawn. Whoever takes this dragon gets Ocean Soul. I love the tension created. They're building the thriller. <laughs> <laughs> Guesswork. Fog of War. The At any <laughs> second. <laughs> they <laughs> <laughs> Are you scared? Uh, it doesn't sound uh, like you're scared. Uh, That's well, not a scared I mean, er, laugh. You told me you knew my address. It's like the nervous laugh. You know what I mean? <laughs> the calls coming from inside your the house. There we go. Humanoid breaks down mid lane tier. Uh, last tower there. And is going to look to take this inhibitor pretty quickly. Of course, has enough AP. Yeah. He burns through this pretty rapidly. Remember, Mad Lion make a mistake, though. You know, they rely on a lot of poke and then kite play pattern here to make use full use of the Yumi. So uh, a lot of multiple directions. You want to kind of split split your positioning, but still focus fire. So it, it creates kind of this dichotomy where you need the positioning early on with your wards. They should be able to get this ocean. That thing evaporates. So they're the ones that finally went out the the long, arduous war of the Ocean Drake of 2021. <laughs> in 41 minutes into the game, Mad Lions prevail. This might be an eight Drake game. You know, we're, we're oh, already teleport seven. flake! They're Here going for it. Mad Lions pincer. That this is a is deep big. teleport. They didn't even see for the channel. The recalls are staggered. BDD's gonna have to TP into this one, or are they Surprise. gonna just jump right onto Ruler? Waiting time. Kobe, the call is coming from inside. No, it's not. They're gonna back away. Don't Man, they really got us with that one. <laughs> 
Do they know the TP is gone? That would be the question. Because that is a cooldown that could be. Yeah, they're like, how did he get here? <laughs> I believe he teleported, <laughs> sir. <laughs> Sneaky monkey. <laughs> uh, All right, they're back inside the base. Right. Now I'm going to step four. Are they going to go for the engage? Well, are they feeling confident enough? In the meantime, they can just like humiliate one or two autos at a time, eventually break this down. But I feel like we just keep getting more and more hyped. We're in the filler well, arc of the anime. It's you, time to fight, boys. Let's go. Yeah, I mean, it's so difficult now for a Gen G because you can only cut so much healing. Um, even at <laughs> reduced properties here, when you've got Yumi on the team, plus the Ocean uh, Soul, they can easily avoid a lot of these all-ins. How hard is it? You know, life, yeah, you can throw out the hook, but guess what? Wukong's got answers, Lucent's got answers, everybody on this team has dashes, has answers to try and avoid the all-in. That's a scoop D, he does manage to hit him, but now he has to go gold and he has to fight a bit more time. Life now going in, they're trying to lock up the carry, but now yo, yo, a massive ult, now they're fighting into the pinch into the waiting arms of a Wukong, but life, Ruler, maybe they can get this done. Ruler still barreling through this Callista, can they kill him? She's just so strong, but Humanoid now on the flank, Ruler has to survive, Ruler has to make it through Humanoid's onslaught, can he do it? Can he finish the job? That's the GA proc. He's walking away, but mad, surely they've come out to win the day. No, life buying more time for Rascal to now retreat. Ruler still standing. It is an absolute bloodbath at the end of the day. Mad Lion slightly advantaged. Yumi chase down, finds everyone except for Rascal. Teleports out, they can save the base. And there's still a minute left on the Baron, so your death timers are not long enough. That doesn't mean Baron, there is still more fight left in this game, baby. 43 and a half minutes in, we still haven't even hit the peak. Ring the bell, baby. It's time for round two, round three, round four, whatever you want to call it. One more fight. Oh, Gen.G, I feel like they backed themselves into the corner. The good news is even in the Ocean Soul, they have so much healing reduction on this composition, <laughs> but they can't afford to make another mistake. If El Yoyo gets another good ult, this game is over. It's so hard for them to chase down any of the stragglers out of these team fights, though. So even if you have a good opening, and we're like, oh my god, they got him, they pincer, you know, Karsi's down, Flash Exhaust down for the Lucian. It, you can't pin down any of the other assassins, and Yumi actually gets to switch between them. Full value here, and with the sustain, they draw it out, they poke down, they pick off another person, they pick off another person, and, and Mad Lions are able to slowly whittle down uh, the members of Gen G finally picking them off and getting an objective in the aftermath. But this super minions up mid, Baron now on the map. You can push out your side waves first. You see, quickly sending Humanoid down the bottom side. His teleport is ready. And meanwhile, Gen G, no, they're forced. Not too many options here. Have to group up, try and get your mid prior back, and then force. Oh, a difficult position to be in. And Elio again waiting in the darkness. Time is not in Gen G's favor. So Mad just need to play a little bit cautiously here. You prod and pro and poke, but you don't fall victim to a brush game. All you have to do is buy time. Slowly LeBlanc will win you the game. At the inhibitor now, chunking it down. Super minions will buff each other up. There you go. Cautious play here for Mad Lions to finish it out exactly as you should. So hard for Gen G to find a way back in this game. So hard for Gen G to even find a 5v5 if they're, that's what they're looking for. Because as you highlighted, Humanoid already so, so slippery, so hard to lock down. But when you've got a Yumi on this team as well, there's no reason for them to group. Mad Lions, though, are going to force the Baron. Again, Gen G looks like they just have to concede this. But if they concede this one, if Mad Lions push in and take a third inhibitor, then if that's not the game, surely the Elder Dragon will be. And at that point, two, three inhibitors down, Mad might not even need to force a 5v5 that, that objective. You know what everybody's game plan at these late stages of the game when you're behind like this is? Your, your game plan is, I hope that they force a fight on Elder Dragon and we win a, a smite flip because Elder Dragon is the, great e is the great equalizer. That would allow you to actually win the team fight to finish off people. So if you can stall out until then and then win a flip on an Elder Dragon, that would be your hope. Mad Lions, they don't have to give you that opportunity though. With Baron buff, with two lines of super minions, all you have to do is focus on top side and just pin down Gen G. Wait for your minions to do some work for you. You see, they're not committing, just waiting for the extra reinforcements. The six man on the field, the supers coming in. Yep. Mad Lions obviously praised for their team fighting, but knowing when not to fight, also an important skill. Is Humanoid going to go for a bit of poke here on the clit? Massive damage now frees up the mad bottom lane to move in on the top side and break down the third yep. inhibitor. Gen G on life support, just surviving as best as they can, but if they lose a single member here, the game will end. They might not even need to lose anybody as Matt just keep the siege going. 
Book goes in. Fake Wukong now locked up. Instantly the ulti onto the Nexus, and that's gonna do it. Gen G, they're hoping to find something back. BDD firing, trying to get anything done. He's gonna push him away. He's got big damage. He's exhausted. Armlet though, still, it's just not enough. He goes golden. He's got a stopwatch too, but he just cannot make the play happen. Matt Lyons close out with confidence. And fans around the world rejoice as Yumi finds another <laughs> successful victory. And all seriously, congrats to Mad Lions <laughs> weathering that early deficit. Absolutely. And I think very intelligently and 